Good evening. Thank you for being here this evening. I used all the excitement this morning. This lesson tonight is not super exciting, but it's very informative. So, if you came for excitement, try me again later. I'm better, I promise. The message gets better. But tonight we're going to talk about something that is important. Last Sunday night we discussed how God is holy, how He's different. He's set apart. He's not part of His creation. He is the Creator. He is pure and wholly <laughs> unique. He, he's different. It is that quality in turn that He calls us to. Peter tells us that we are to be holy as God is holy. It is a repetition of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 2, which is the commandment to the Israelites. And what we're going to find through the message tonight is that the things that were commanded to the Israelites in reference to God being holy and them being holy apply to us as well. Not just because it's written here in Peter. Peter says, you know, just like that, also you. But we are going to be able to look at some of the contexts of what's going on in Leviticus and say, well, this is the instruction that was given to them. And if it was important for them, Perhaps it should also be important for us. Leviticus 19, God spends a lot of time talking about how He's a different God than they're used to. The, he is not God, a God like Molech. He is not a God that is worshipped in the ways that the Egyptians worship. He is not a God to be worshipped in the ways that the peoples around them are worshipping their gods. He is pure he is holy and that was some of the context of what we discussed last week and because of that he's looking for his children to be different to be not like the other peoples not like the peoples that are around them so it's a trickle down effect because they serve a holy god the israelites serve a holy god they're supposed to be a holy people that they're supposed to take after their God. Well, God is the creator. All people are supposed to take after him. And yet the, the Egyptians, they take after their gods and they are serving the gods that they have created, one of the Niles. So they do stuff to please the Nile is the way that they see it. And they do stuff to please the God of the the bulls, which was a big one, the apis, uh, their god of the bulls, and the, the god of the reptiles to stay away from their water, from the swampy areas, the irrigation that they had. And so they took after their gods. And what, what our god is saying is, okay, you need to understand who I am. I'm different. I'm holy. I'm beyond and I'm other. And I need you to be the same. I need you to be holy as well. So... What he tells them throughout 19 is you're going to worship me differently because I'm a different kind of God than you're used to seeing in the world. You're supposed to be a different child of God. Being a child of God is supposed to be seen throughout his country as well. And so you get instances or commands that look silly or, or funny or weird. And they are about showing God in the land at that time. If you were to go through the land, it would look different than the other nations just on its surface. So like in Leviticus 19.19, 19, you shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your cattle breed with a different kind. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed. You shall not wear a garment of cloth made of two kinds of material. It's not just that they're supposed to be a different people. They're supposed to look different. And all of the things that they see before them, they're supposed to be reminded that they are different. And there's another scripture we'll look at coming up. The being holy because he is holy or as he is holy is about making your life different because you serve a different God. So he gives them rules in that effect. Before the call to holiness in chapter 20, you have two different sections. The first section about Molech and the second section about uh, sexual impurity. In the section of Molech, which is the wrong kind of God, it says, um, say to the people of Israel, any 
one of the people of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn in Israel who gives any of his children to Molech will surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I myself will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among my people because he has given one of his children to Molech to make my sanctuary unclean and to profane my holy name. So if you Google search for Molech, you'll see a bunch of different things. It's uh, supposed to be a god with like a bull face or a bull horns and that he was typically cast in like cast metal as like a statue with his arms crossed in front of him and a, and a bull head up above that. So what they would do is they would they'd hollow, they'd have the, the arms kind of hollowed out and they'd build a really big fire in there and the inside of the head would be would be empty so that the flames would come out of the eyes it probably was a really cool looking barbecue pit right big fire flames out of the eyes probably looked pretty intimidating it's supposed to be a god problem is that they would barbecue children they would sacrifice to their god molech their their children you can learn a lot, and I'm not going to go down this road. You can learn a lot about how God views abortion in what the sacrificing of children is to Molech. Again, this is not the first scripture I'd go to, but children are different. Children are special, and children are important. And one of the things that God verbatim warns them about is sacrificing children. God wants your children to grow in nurturing admonition of His Word and His will so that they grow up to be people who follow and love Him, not the ones that are sacrificed or killed or destroyed. The section after this covers uh, sexual purity or impurity and the punishments thereof. It'll go through and discuss relationships and and some are really kind of gross and the discussion there or the understanding to take away from that is you should have a special relationship with the one you have a special relationship with specifically and in the context that that should be God so number one you look different because he is different number two as you get to chapter 20 you have a special relationship with God and no other God. Number three, that you keep yourself pure for God. That you're not given to the carnalities of the world. And that gets us to being holy. In Leviticus chapter 20, starting in verse 22, You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my rules and do them, that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out, and you shall not walk in the customs of the nation that I am driving out before you, for they did all these things, and therefore I detested them. But I have said to you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give to you give it to you to possess a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has separated you from the peoples. You shall therefore be separate. You shall therefore separate the clean beast from the unclean, the unclean bird from the clean you shall not make yourselves detestable by beast or bird or anything that with which crawls on the ground which i have set apart for you to hold unclean you shall be holy to me for i the lord am holy and have separated you from the peoples and you should be mine notice god hates snakes too it's another thing that he and i have in common so you get the statement here at 26, at, at, at the end of 26, that you shall be mine. And you could go to several other passages and discuss God's unique covenant with his people. There are two major groups of people or peoples that have covenants throughout the Bible. You have a husband with his wife and you have God with the people of Israel, the children of Israel, and they have covenant together. They're, they're supposed to be united together. You see the similar thing when you get to the New Testament of Christ with the church and that we're supposed to be united together. And that makes more sense when you look back at the previous verses about being pure and having physical intimacy, purity values and having offspring values. And then you make all of, or you not make it all fit, but it all fits together and because you're serving a God that's different than the world. Okay, now turn that around and look at outside the door. 
does the world practice giving their children away, not valuing their children, and again, not specifically talking about pre-birth medical procedures, but just the valuation of children. Oh, there's a lot of school teachers in here. How many parents are disassociated from their children or from their children's education? Or how many homes are broken or, or just have huge problems or disconnects between the parents and the children? I'm not saying all of those are, are sinful, harmful uh, relationships, but that's not what God has called his people to be. That's not the ideal. And also, after that, the purity. The, I, the one is given to the other, that they have a special bond between one and another, and that there's nothing that gets in the way of that. There's nothing that, that breaks that up or that's not shared with any other partners. It is the one and the other. And that's also just not found throughout most of society. You want to look different from the rest of the world. Here's two great first steps. And that's what's commanded to the children of Israel. A very similar statement is spoken in Deuteronomy 11. Again, these are going to be commandments that are kind of given side by side or perhaps given at the exact same time. And this is how it applies in one direction and this is how it applies in another direction. And in Deuteronomy 11, starting in verse 18, you shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, talking of them when you are sitting in the house and when you are walking by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days may be um, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give them as long as the heavens are above the earth. For if you will be careful to do all this commandment that I command you to do, loving the Lord your God, walking in all his ways, and holding fast to him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations before you, and you will dispossess nations greater and mightier than you. One of the words that I find really interesting in this section of Scripture is God's talking about following the rules. He's talking about you know, getting them tattooed on your forearm. Not specifically, but I mean, hey, it works. Writing them on the walls in your house. And when he gets toward the end of that section, it's not you need to pay attention to the rules because the rules are important. It's look at the end of verse 22, walking in all his ways and holding fast to him. It's not about following the rules. He's not concerned as bigly with, yeah, it's a, I made the word up, with following the rules. He's concerned with you following him. Yes, following the rules. The rules are there to show you what he is. And how you should be close to him. But the point's not the rules. The point is the relationship with him. If your relationship with him is right, you'll begin to look like him. And that means that you'll be doing these and following these rules. But the rules aren't important. The relationship you have with him is important. I didn't say break the rules. What I said was the more important factor was following God. Was having a good relationship with him so you get plenty of other scriptures like in vain do they worship me because their heart's not in it because they don't really care they just showed up with a goat i don't care about the goat i care about their heart and so you have a terrific reminder even in litigation as it were walking in all his ways and holding fast to him and because of that Blessings are to follow. How do you think that played out? Like if you read further ahead in the Bible, do they actually hold fast to him? They don't even hold fast to the rules. So Isaiah, about one or 200 years, depending on the exact timing, about 100 or 200 years before the fall of Israel, of uh, Jerusalem, is prophesying. And he says, depart, depart, or go out from there. Yes, depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Purify yourselves, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. He is warning them about that statement that we read just previously about being vomited out of the land. 
you got to purify yourself. You've got to get back to having that relationship with God. Verse 12, for you shall not go out in haste and you shall not go forth in flight for the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Again, it's not about how close they got to the rules. It was about their relationship with God. And as they were trying to deal with the nations around them, and you see one king doing this and another king doing that, you have kings that are warned, quit looking at your allies and the countries that are around you for help. Just pray for it and ask God to help you. And they don't. They make alliances with other nations. So you get this verse 12. You don't have to look for the rest of the world to help you. Um, Hobby Lobby is not your Bible. And you can go buy all the stuff from there that you'd like and hang it on your wall. That doesn't change your heart or your relationship with God. It might be helpful. But just having a verse written on your wall or tattooed on your arm is not what God's driving after. It's about the relationship. And so even as Isaiah is telling here in verse 11, you got to get away from the evil. Touch no unclean thing. He also tells them in the next verse, it, remember who you are. Remember that God is before you and God is behind you. That He is supposed to encompass you and it's your relationship with Him that is important. Be holy for He is holy. Be like Him. It makes a lot more sense whenever you're spinning in circles and you can't figure out which way is forward and which way is backwards. When the world has you confused and things are going wrong in your life. Lose your job, lose a family member, have a financial struggle. There are times in your life where you will feel like everything is against you and the whole world is going wrong. And it's so often at these moments where people just take off and run in one direction or another. Isaiah is reminding them, you don't have to take off and run. Stay away from what's evil and remember that God is with you. Be different than the rest of the world because God is with you. Isaiah had been warning them in chapter 52 about something that was coming. There's a negative thing that's coming because they can't pay attention, because they can't follow the rules, because they don't have a relationship with God. And so Isaiah has told them earlier in the chapter that there's going to be a terrific thing coming and that they should look for that. In verse 6 of 52, Therefore my people shall know my name therefore in that day they shall know that it is i who speak here i am how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news and publishes peace who brings good news of happiness who publishes salvation who says to zion your god reigns this verse is quoted somewhere else for everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved how then will they call on him who they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him who, of whom they have not heard? How are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. If you've ever seen me in sandals, you know that this is obviously allegorical. I tell jokes just for Jeremy sometimes. I love Thank you. <laughs> testify salvation is coming and so Isaiah told him you got to be different you're supposed to be different you need to be different get out and touch no unclean thing don't do that but they're not going to listen Israel is going to fall it'll fall into uh, disrepair it'll be possessed by Greece it'll be possessed by Rome and that's where it will be when Christ is born possessed possessed by Rome. But if Peter is going to quote Leviticus, and if Romans here has rewritten Isaiah, 
And both of them are talking about the purity of the people of God in that relationship. And they're going to quote them as saying, this is how it's supposed to be with God. Then how much more should we pay attention to that? In 2 Corinthians, Paul writes, what accord has Christ with Baliel? This is going to be some other weirdo, wacko God that just invent one, pick one. Call it by name, Baliel. Okay, could have been Molech. This is the one that he uses. What accord has Christ with Baliel? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Remember back that verse that we read? I think it was Leviticus 19.19 19, about you don't let your species mix and mingle. And when you plant your field, you only plant one kind of crop in your field and when you make your garments you only use one kind of, of um, material to make the garment out of when you're making your relationship with God it's between you and God as you go through your life your relationship should feature prominently predominantly your relationship with God for we are the temple of the living God, as God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. If God is walking in your life right now, does it look like, a, does your life look like a life that is built on his purity, on service to him, on your relationship with him? Or are your beasts weird looking? And do you have so many irons in the fire? So many things mixed up. And in this part of your life, you may be holy. But that's not Tuesday. Because Tuesday, oh, that's my not holy day. Therefore, go out from their midst and separate from them, says the Lord. And touch no unclean thing. And I, then I will welcome you. That touch no unclean thing. Sounds real familiar. The same as the warning from Isaiah. Touch no unclean thing. I will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. The message of being holy because the Lord is holy is one that elevates and changes our relationship, or at least it should. Because we serve an awesome God, you're supposed to be an awesome people. We are called to be children of God. That makes you demigods. Part God, part human. God dwells inside you. When you put on Christ in baptism, the Holy Spirit resides in you. Okay. I want to be holy like He is holy. I want to be different. I want to be set apart and have a special relationship with Him. And if we've learned anything from looking at the Israelites... When they quit looking at God, when they quit focusing on their relationship with Him, then you can stack rule on top of rule, on top of tenant, on top of statute. None of them matter because they're all going to get broken because the first thing that goes is how much they care about the God that they serve. If your relationship with God is not what it needs to be tonight, can we talk about that? Can we fix that? Because rules are... Rules are fine. They teach us what we're supposed to do. But if your heart is not devoted to God, if you don't have a relationship with Him that is elevating your life to look like Him, then man, we need to work on that. If you need to work on that tonight, make it known before we leave.